Disclaimer. Please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk. Then play at half speed. Thank you. Good evening, bots and listeners. Welcome back to another great episode of The Fire Pit. I'm Dan, British name Nigel, and once again, the three of us have watched a current movie in the theaters, and we're here to complain. I mean, <laughs> talk about it. Yes. You had it right the first time. <laughs> no, no, no. Talk about it. I don't, want, I don't want the audience to be spoiled. But first, we must make connections, really stretch to make connections, and learn more about what we're watching and who we're watching. And so for that... I'll send things over to Tom. Thank you, Nigel. Wait, hang on. I should have read this first before I started saying. In fact, we can't say for sure, but it's definite. <laughs> but it's a definite possibility. You're gonna have fun editing this, Josh. <laughs> You're doing this on purpose, he is. Dick. No, I'm not. If you haven't guessed yet by the clues tonight, we're discussing the Flash. Blah blah blah. blah. All right, take two. Thompson here. American name and secret identity. Tom, and last time out, we all watched... Fuck! I'm a professional. I can do this. Thank you, Nigel I'm keeping, Thompson. I'm keeping all this in, by the way. I am. I, <laughs> I would, too. If you don't, I'm going to be mad. We're not going to be friends anymore. <laughs> okay, take three, action. Thank you, Nigel Thompson here. American name Tom. And last time out, we all watched Cocaine Bear, which has nothing to do with this movie, as it doesn't feature a bear. But... Cocaine may have been involved. In fact, we can't say for sure, but it's a definite possibility. Tonight, we're discussing The Flash. Get it? Because cocaine and going fast. The latest and possibly last film <laughs> in the much maligned DCEU before James Gunn puts it and us out of misery. But to tell us more about that, and to crunch some numbers, I speed things over to Josh. Speed Force, whoosh. <laughs> Explains all the things. Speed Force. Thank you, Thompson. Josh here. British name, Reginald. My secret identity is something, man. Yes. Um, as mentioned before, we are discussing The Flash, starring everybody's favorite Flash, Ezra Miller, Barry Allen, um, and Sasha Kaye. Kale. It's Kelly. I don't know. Callie Cal. and Sasha Kelly as Supergirl, Michael Shannon returning as General Zod, and Michael Keaton returning as Ben Batman. Michael Keaton returning as Ben Affleck. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I remember him from the movie. <laughs> it's like Michael Shannon returning as General Zod, and Michael Keaton and Ben Affleck both returning as Batman. Yay! So the DCEU is. Um, yeah, yes, the DCEU is desperate for love, so they resorted to two Batmen for the top billing. So let's just go ahead and bleed into the box office. The <laughs> Flash was a box office bomb. It um, did not speed its way to $100 million. As a matter of fact, it's currently on its like 15th day of release, and it has yet to break $100 Oof. Million domestically. Oof. Wow. Oof. Yes. So the Flash is not doing well. It uh, opened to a amazing "Sad Prices Rise" music, fifty-five million dollars on its opening weekend, and on this past weekend, so far it's rounding up to um, fifteen million dollars. That's a hell of a drop off. That's wow. As of as of this recording, it's fifteenth day of release and and all that. And and I know there's other movies coming out this weekend and what have you, but oof, it's not good. Plus, I mean, let's be honest, it's only the summer box office season, guys. Movies never do well in the box office. Yeah, it's only Ju June. Yeah. It's only June. Superhero movies have historically never done well no, in the summer. ever. Yeah, because, you know, when Man of Steel was released 10 years ago on June 14th, 2013, it only opened to $116 million, total gross of almost $300 million. And we're not even going to talk about the Marvel films. We're not. We're not. No. No, and then like we're we're not going to talk about you know Justice League either, and how <laughs> that it had a domestic opening of ninety three million dollars and a total you know 
domestic gross of $230 million. We're not going to talk no. about that one in relation no. to the flash. And I, I don't know, but we shouldn't talk about Batman v Superman either. You know, don't. <laughs> that would just, that would be bad. That would be bad. Until, because, until we get to that film. That's not, <laughs> because we don't want to talk about, you know, it's opening weekend at $166 million for March. <laughs> And it's total domestic at three hundred and thirty million. No, we don't want to talk about that either, especially in relation to the Flash. <laughs> Can we stop beating this poor redheaded stepchild? I'm feeling bad yes. now. <laughs> so, um, N- Nigel, do you have any trivia about this film? <laughs> uh, I've got a little bit. I mean, obviously, we all know about the production woes. It was in development hell forever. Like it was supposed to come out, or it was like greenlit. I think in. 20 well it was greenlit back in like 2021 i think or whatever and then they they they, i think it's been mostly done filmed since like late 2021 yeah yeah, yeah. like i think like 98 percent of the movie was done and then like wb warner brothers or whatever had this you know hbo had this big shake up and they fired their their ceo and they they merged with discovery they scrapped a couple of projects, most notably the Batgirl movie, oh which God. was actually supposed to follow this. It was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Batgirl was... See, this movie was supposed to be the soft reboot of the DCEU. It was supposed to be like, okay, we're, we're going to cleanse the the Zack Snyder out of the DCEU, at least most of it, and then we'll, we'll soft reboot, we'll go forward from there. So and that already had mixed reactions with fans, because there are some fans who really like the Zack Snyder verse. And then there's fans who hate it with a passion. And then there's other fans who are just indifferent towards it and think that they, that DC should just keep on doing it because at least it's different from Marvel. You know, you don't need to follow Marvel's formula perfectly. Just do your own mm-hmm, thing. Mm-hmm. People were like, uh, now nah, Warner brothers was like, we're going to use this to reboot the Snyder verse. And Batgirl was supposed to follow it because if anyone remembers, Michael Keaton is in this movie as Batman and he was going to be Batman slash Bruce Wayne in the Batgirl movie. Yeah, because he was originally like, supposed was... to replace Ben Affleck in the DCEU. Really? Yeah, after this movie, the reboot was going to be Michael Keaton is now Batman going forward and he was going to be an older Batman, Bruce Wayne, obviously, because Michael Keaton's older now. Uh, he mm-hmm. was going to take Batgirl under his wing and train her. And she was going to be the new bat person in the DCEU. And Michael Keaton was going to kind of take the, uh, I think the original idea was Michael Keaton's Batman was going to take the Alfred role in the DCEU. Um, Jeremy Irons, Alfred is kind of the, 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 the TV trope for it is the man in the chair or the person in the chair, the Oracle mm-hmm, type mm-hmm. role. So that was what Michael Keaton, the Batman was going to do. And then there was a lot of speculation that will they do a Batman beyond movie with Michael Keaton as the older Bruce Wayne from Batman beyond. Oh, that would have been so good. Then the shakeup happened and Warner Brothers scrapped mm-hmm. the Batman or Batgirl movie. They scrapped Batgirl and they ordered this movie to go through extensive rewrites. And then Black Adam came out and Henry Cavill has a notable cameo at the very end of that film. So then Henry Cavill gets to announce that, oh, I'm back as Superman. And then there was like, oh, well, they're adding Henry Cavill Superman back into the Flash movie so that he's still going to be part of the new uh, DCEU. Then they hired James Gunn, or I don't know. If, I don't know if I got the timeline wrong, but then they hired James Gunn, and James Gunn's like, "I'm gonna just reboot the whole thing and start from scratch." And so Henry Cavill's back out as Superman. <laughs> this is probably only going to be Michael Keaton's only appearance in the DCEU or whatever the DCEU looks like going forward. Mm-hmm. I highly doubt Ezra Miller is going to be back as the Flash. I will get to that later. <laughs> so, like this movie is kind of um it's a one-off it definitely sets things up we'll get to that final thoughts it sets things up for the future but it's it's a future that's not going to come to pass because uh the dceu is being reboot rebooted in 2025 is the scheduled first movie which is superman which they just casted the new superman in lois lane just like a couple of days ago Mm -hmm. so they're going with a whole new plan going forward, and that's pretty much what I got for trivia. Is just the production woes of this film. Like it's just. Oh yeah, yeah, know. yeah. Because as I was, I I remember this being um, announced in 2014, and like, hey, we're going to do a Flash any day now, guys, and finally, oh boy, dude, yeah, almost 10 years later, yeah, this yeah. thing's been in development hell for years, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, you remember Ezra Miller's first appearance as Flash is the cameo in Batman v Superman. Yeah, that was Suicide Squad. Was that it was Su- his first cameo? Really? Because they were doing the Captain Boomerang, right? But Batman v Superman correct. came out yeah. before 
Suicide Squad. Did it? Yeah, because at yeah. the very end, yeah, because Batman v Superman comes out, and then they had Suicide Squad. Because at the the cameo at the end of Suicide Squad is Bruce Wayne telling. Oh yeah, that was the same year they came out. Yeah, it, it's yeah, but the the cameo is. That's right. He did have the flashback when he uh <laughs> came through the time vortex or whatever. Yeah, and then it? he he tells uh, Amanda Waller at the end of Suicide Squad, Bruce Wayne does. He goes, you know, keep your team in line, or I'll get my team on them like that. So. But yeah, either way, it was Ezra Miller. Like that was 2016 was Batman v Superman, wasn't it? Was it 2016? Yeah, it was 2016 was Batman v Superman. It was. Superman. It was. It was March 2016, and uh, Suicide Squad was like August 2016. Yeah, so it was like 2016 is the very first appearance of Ezra Miller as Flash, and they greenlit that movie in or this movie in like 2014, and it just now came out after 10 years of production hell. So almost 10 years of production hell, and they made use of that time so well. But we'll get into that. Oh boy. But that's all I pretty much got for trivia. I just wanted to talk about the production was if I start going into the Ezra Miller stuff, we're going to be here all day. So, um, because, all day. Yeah. The internet's darling Ezra Miller. Yeah. Yes. All right. So that's, that's pretty much all I got for the trivia. Um, it's like I said, there's a little bit of trivia in the, uh, as far as the movie goes, but I, I, like I said, I really wanted to talk about the production woes. So I will, um, send things over to Tom who hopefully has a couple of little snippets on the, making of or the production of this movie because i know we have a returning director the director for this film actually we we've covered one or one of his movies before so we did indeed yes welcome to the flash tagline worlds collide and josh since you're editing this if you could insert power man 5000s when worlds collide right about here which i'm sure you're doing in the future yes i i will do that for you tom Fantastic. Thank you, future Josh. When worlds collide, you'll laugh so hard. Summary. The Flash follows perpetually down on his luck Barry Allen, a.k.a. The Flash, who discovers that he can travel back in time and potentially save his mother from being murdered. Unfortunately, this sends a ripple in reality that completely rewrites his universe. And tragically rewrites back to the future now he must find a way to save this new world before it's too late the flash was directed by andy muschetti who notably directed it chapters one and two so a nice little returning director to the podcast this movie was also written by christina hodson who wrote birds of prey and bumblebee but there's some story and screenwriter credits going to John Francis Daly, Jonathan Goldstein, and Joby Harold. I don't know how much input these guys had. Um, as Nigel noted, this movie was announced back in uh, 2014. And then, as also noted by Josh and Dan, 10 years in production hell. Um, they finally started um, greenlighting this in 2019. But something happened in 2020. Um, um, well, yeah, we started our podcast. Released? Yeah, that's yeah, right. that's, that's that's what happened in 2020. So yeah. they decided they needed to do this for the podcast. Yeah, yeah, good on them. But they, yeah, good, guy, yeah, good, good, good guy, DCEU. Yeah, and so they waited till 2021 to start filming this thing. Um, and now because of their patience, we finally get to talk about this. So since we didn't watch this film together and we've already watched this, we're going, I'm going to go through the speed force and go back in time to past Dan. Dan, what did past Dan expect from this movie before he watched it? Well, uh, judging or going from the production woes that I knew about and the obviously the off camera behind camera stuff that Ezra Miller's been doing and being part of uh, and accused of and whatever. I wasn't expecting much from this film, especially since the shakeup happened about six, seven months ago. Like the WB has basically said we're rebooting the whole universe. And James Gunn said, I'm starting from scratch, which I mean, I, that does make sense. Like, I mean, you don't hire James Gunn and then make him work with someone else's stuff. I wasn't expecting much out of this film. I was kind of hoping it would be fun, like just a fun movie. I was looking forward to seeing Michael Keaton back as Batman. I still like the 1989 Batman movie. Batman Returns to me doesn't hold up very well, but I still love 89 Batman. 
And I'll always love the 89 Batman because it is what inspired Batman, the animated series. So, which is my favorite interpretation of Batman ever. I wasn't expecting much, but I was expecting to have some fun. We'll go with what did it meet those expectations in a minute. Tom, I'm curious as to what past Tom thought about going. Well, I kind of knew what past Tom was expecting. <laughs> like, I think the audience should hear what past Tom was expecting. Oh boy. Yes. Yeah. So <clears throat> let me pull up my notes here. What was past Tom expecting of this film? Oh, just giant danger is what I have written here. I hit cape fatigue a while ago, and nothing about the DCEU has changed my opinions on it. So I was dreading this film between the word of mouth, the delays after the delays, the entire debate buckle just trying to get the film made you know just a week or two ago i watched the screen rant's whole pitch meeting skit so i knew all the plot beats and at the time was thinking oh thank god we are watching this piece of garbage and then josh came back was all like <laughs> hey guys i haven't suffered enough these past three months we should watch the flash <laughs> uh, the trailers were trying to hook me with Michael Keaton, but I'm immune to member berries now. I, I I know nostalgia bait when I see it. I was going to have a good beer or four and just think of Great Britain as I uh, watch this film. That were my expectations going in. What about you, past Josh? What were you expecting from this movie? Oh, God. I remember, like, okay, I was wanting to watch this movie. Obviously, I'm more of a DC fanboy than I am a Marvel fanboy. But I won't lie if I say I have been disappointed in the current state of DC's movies. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm with you there, Tom. Fucking cape fatigue. Like, if there was ever a term that describes me when it comes to superhero movies, I am just not excited for anything new Marvel's coming out with. I liked Guardians 3, but out of the recent crop of Marvel stuff, no. I and mean, I think I think I might have convinced myself to like She-Hulk because I needed to like something. Yeah, I'm still trying to find the version you watched because I can't. I so... <laughs> Tom's not wrong. I mean, if you guys remember, I said I was going off to uh, Air Force officer training school back in March. I'm done with that, thank God. So this was great compared to that. Spoiler alert. Yeah, I, I honestly, I was going into this movie. I wasn't expecting it to be great. I was hoping that I would at least, I wanted to come out of the movie with enjoying it. I had fun watching the movie. You know, we, we've had those movies yeah. in the past where we watch them. We acknowledge they're not good movies. I was hoping for Aquaman. Like that was my bar. I was like, at least be as good as Aquaman. Yeah, that I, that's very fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, I didn't expect you to be good. If DC movies have taught me anything, it's that the director can't be the director and do what they want to do. They can't make the movie that they think would be good. They yeah. have to make what the committee wants. So mm -hmm, I just, mm -hmm. I, don't, I didn't have a lot of faith in it, but I was hoping to come out of it having fun. I was anxious, yeah. an anxious to see uh, Michael Keaton and how they handle everything, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. that's that's really those were my expectations. I wasn't I didn't have high expectations, but I was looking forward to watching the movie. Were you or was anyone else here impacted by like Ezra Miller and all the drama going into your pre watch? Because I know I wasn't, but the way the internet goes, it's like rah, 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 Ezra Miller, da da da, everything else. I don't really I don't think he's a good person, you know, and I, I, I do kind of wonder why Ezra Miller gets a pass for all the things that well, actually he uses they them pronouns. So I will I, I don't understand why Ezra Miller gets a pass for the stuff they do. But other actors and actresses have done not as bad of things, but have been, quote unquote, canceled, you know, what I mean, or fired from their projects or or whatever. I mean, and I, I still think it's a little short sighted of DC to kind of like shun Henry Cavill for doing basically nothing but making it being in a mediocre superman movie at worst and ezra miller is still the flash do you see what i mean like it's still kind mm -hmm. of and and honestly they haven't straight up said if this is ezra miller's last movie as the flash because they've kind of pussyfooted around whether or not they will be back as the flash in the new dcu going forward so mm -hmm. the fact that ezra miller may still be the flash but like oh henry cavill's out ben affleck's out Gal Gadot's out. Those people, like, they're upstanding citizens as far as I know. Now, I don't know. Maybe Henry Cavill's got a torture dungeon somewhere. I don't know, but he hides it very well. 
But I, well, he's really into Warhammer, so you know, would it really surprise some of us? Different type of torture. They're mostly upstanding <laughs> citizens. So, like, I that was the only problem I have. But that doesn't cloud my judgment of the movie. Like, there's a lot of actors and actresses that have done shady crap or have said racist things on the internet or have done whatever. And I still enjoy their performance in a movie and I still enjoy the movie or the TV show for what it is and not for what they think politically or they say on the internet or something like that. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Cl- the cloud hanging over Ezra Miller didn't really <laughs> pun intended cloud my judgment of what I was expecting in this movie. What about you, Josh? Okay. When Ezra Miller was at the height of his air quotes, infam- infamous, uh, infamous illegal shit that he was doing. Yeah. Yeah. Allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, 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 allegedly. And there was rumors coming around. They were just going to straight up cancel this movie. I was just like, Oh, okay. <laughs> Like it wouldn't have hurt my feelings any had they actually just you know canceled the movie. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. yeah, after having watched it, it definitely wouldn't have hurt my feelings if they had canceled it. But we're spoiled. Save we're that here. for the, the 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 second half, Dan. Come on, <laughs> spoilers. Damn, spoilers. My fault. I got excited. I got excited. I have thoughts. But, but it didn't. Uh, but it didn't like add a negative two to your uh, expectations of this film. You didn't. You, no. you weren't excited for this. But then hearing no, Ezra like, Miller stuff, you're just like, oh, now I'm gonna. None of that stuff. I, I'd like to think that I'm good at separating the actor from the movie. Mm-hmm. Like I don't like Tom Cruise per se in terms of like yeah. his personal. Like I heard he's a great person, but it's like the way the Scientology thing. I can't stand that, and I don't like the fact that he does. He's in that, but I think he's a great actor. And I think that, you know, he may be a great person on set, but the Scientology is definitely something, but I don't judge him for that. I'll still watch his movies. So mm-hmm. just because he does that doesn't mean that I'm not going to watch his movies. There's very few, and I can't think of any off the top of my head that I would like, I wouldn't go watch their movies because they're in it. Well, like, like yeah. for me, for me, I disagree with every single thing John Voight has ever said politically, but I think John Voight's a great actor and I will still go see John Voight movies. Yeah. You see what I'm yeah, yeah. Like, so that doesn't like, Ezra Miller's political beliefs and those things don't bother me. And also the crimes that he's allegedly accused of. I, I, I if I was running WB, I definitely would have fired him by now. But mm-hmm. I mean, it's still not going to affect whether or not I'm going to enjoy the film. So yeah, yeah, honestly, yeah. honestly, if they would have fired Ezra Miller and then let's let's say they brought in Grant Gustin, who's the Flash on the uh, CW shows. Let's say they fire Ezra Miller, bring in Grant Gustin and then just reshot all the Ezra Miller scenes with Grant Gustin. It would have just made me think this movie's even more of a dumpster fire going in than it was. Oh, my God. When they just kept Ezra Miller in it. So I'm like, wow, this yeah. movie can't get any worse. <laughs> well, I remember reading something on Reddit like a while ago. I tried to find it, but dude, this was like when he was doing all of his illegal shit. They was just like, well, they're going to give him like three options. Uh, one of them, they're going to cancel the movie. The second one, they're going to uh, say, you're either going to get this shit right. You're not going to go on any press tours and you're just going to stop doing illegal shit or, you know, we're going to make your life hell. Mm-hmm. And then it's funny as in like a week later, WB announced their plans are going to go forward with the movie. And then the top comment was referencing that other comment that I'd read saying, oh, okay, so option two then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they made them, a, they made yeah. them an offer. They can't refuse. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I don't, I don't really subscribe to the quote unquote cancel culture. And I don't believe that people should be canceled for certain things, especially, you know, Twitter threads from 14 years ago. Thank God Twitter didn't oh, exist yeah. when I was in high school. Dude, I look at some of my old videos that I made with a camcorder. And I'm all like, if TikTok existed when I was in high school, I would be fucked right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As the guy making a podcast. We would have been cringe canceled. <laughs> right. The guy, God. I would have canceled myself for some of the shit I recorded as a kid. My God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Not, it's not offensive. It's just bad. Kid, put away the camcorder. Oh, boy. Now, it, now it, it didn't really ultimately lead to box office success, but Warner Brothers had the right idea with centering the marketing around Michael Keaton returning as Batman. Like mm-hmm. they basically advertised this movie as a Batman film, not the Flash. See, that disappointed oh, yeah. me uh, quite a bit, but go on with your thoughts, Nigel. Well, I was just saying that th- that was their whole marketing strategy was definitely like, OK, let's play on the nostalgia berries for Michael Keaton coming back as Batman. And mm-hmm. that'll be, you know, we'll we'll go on that. And then uh, Later trailers started showing shots of like Michael Shannon as Zod. So it's like, mm-hmm. okay, so now it's like an alternate Man of Steel kind of movie now. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. also a lot of the trailers centered around Sasha Kelly as Supergirl. So like, oh, we're going to have Supergirl in this movie or at least a version of her. And Michael Keaton's coming back as Batman. But they kind of sort of advertise this movie as a Batman film with maybe <laughs> the Flash might be in it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of, they did. They gave it the um, 
Batman v Superman treatment. Yeah, but Batman v Superman is more of a Batman movie than this is because like he actually shares 50 percent of the screen time with Superman in Batman v Superman. But Batman's not in this movie that much. He's he's in the movie. He plays a part, but. This is not a Batman film. But it is very nostalgia baity. Josh, what was your thought? I again I said I'm dis- I was disappointed by the advertising, but what did you get drawn in by the Michael Keaton? Uh keep in mind I was locked away in a box for two months leading up to this movie. Oh so I didn't really get to see any of the at one point they let us go out and I saw a trailer for the movie and it said June sixteenth. I'm like, I'll be done with this when that comes out. Thank God. <laughs> Oh no, this movie was your shining light at the end of the tunnel. Oh no. And in the words of Metallica, it was a freight train. (laughs) No, no, it was more of a, when that movie comes out, I'll be done with this. Yeah, I missed a lot of it. Like I remember reading about it. It's like, people were like, it's kind of funny how Sasha Kelly is, uh, she's like doing all the press tours for this movie. It's like, why? Because Ezra Miller. Yeah. Do you want them to say anything else yeah, at they this didn't, point? They absolutely did not want Ezra Miller anywhere near a hot microphone. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. God. <laughs> like, quick, put him back in the box. Yeah. It's like, he's the face of the movie, but he's not the face of the movie. <laughs> he's, they're in the movie. You're really coming for Michael Keaton, everyone. We know you're here. Well, that's what WB wanted to advertise. You know, they don't want Ezra Miller. They wanted to de-emphasize Ezra Miller in the movie, even though they are the star of the film. And it's very much a Flash movie. But it's like, no, we'll just advertise Michael Keaton's coming back as Batman because that'll get the fans happy. And like, it'll get the fans to buy a ticket. It ain't going to make them happy. And for me, I want part of me wonders if that's why they want the Michael Keaton route, that double, you know, first you have your Batman baits because that's what they did with Batman v Superman. They didn't trust Superman enough to have his own movie. So they threw in Batman and they had even less faith in Flash so they throw in Michael Keaton Batman. It's like you're gonna you're gonna come, you're gonna come so he will say the line. You're gonna hear him say, Let's get nuts, guys, and I'm Batman. I don't know if it was so much Ezra Miller why they did that, but I think Ezra Miller's esqueness definitely maybe nudged them to like, let's double down on this. Let's double down on the Batman. Throw in all the Batman. Yeah. And yes. speaking of throwing in all the Batman. We've talked about the pre-production of this film and we've talked about our expectations, but I have thoughts and they're final. So we need to get to them. Tom, play the music. I'm actually, hey, this is future Tom coming to the past, uh, Dan. I'm actually in Florida right now, so I can't play the music. Oh, oh. uh, And I hate my life right now because I said I'd never edit. (sighs) Josh, play the music. Welcome back to another speedy episode of the Fire Pit Podcast. I am your interspersal host, Josh here, and you may be just a slight bit confused as to who's giving you this. That's because we ran back in time as fast as we could, created some really bad CG looking time orb things, and we made a minor change and rebooted our entire multiverse. So now, I get to be here, and I get to be the one doing the interspersal segment. It's always been this way. You've known nothing different. Or Tom went on vacation, and I took an extensively long time to edit this episode, which seems more likely given that none of us have superpowers. I don't know. I think Dan did at one point. Anywho, welcome back. I'm Josh. So we are watching The Flash. Well, let's go with we've watched The Flash. But now we're talking about it. I imagine you enjoyed, thoroughly enjoyed our expectations. So now we get to go and listen to what we thought of the film. So we'll be speeding on to that part of it in just a moment. But first, let's just leave it open for an ad or a skit. Let's see. Well, that was probably blank space if it wasn't then we have gone back into the past again and we've changed something but yes no skits on this particular episode why do you ask because time but now i'm supposed to say something epic with a truly epic soundtrack 
that I totally didn't rip off of YouTube. About you sending us an email to Curtain Call Entertainment, I-N-C, at gmail.com, that you'll send it. We'll run back in time, change a minor thing in the past that will cause massive repercussions in the future that cause us to never, ever respond. I mean, what do you expect? We're a podcast. We're not a league of avenging superheroes or anything like that. Are we? No. So, anywho, I will get you get back to the episode. Thank you for joining us. And as always, I'm not Tom. Bye. <laughs>So that was The Flash. We didn't actually watch it. We kind of just paused the recording and kept going. But um, <laughs> that's why there's not a played section, because yes. the Now, Nigel, would you mind giving your final thoughts? Because I know you have them about this movie. The I have a few. Yours. A few? I have a few. He said sarcastically. Um, uh, this, honestly, this movie, when I walked out of it, I wish you guys had been in the theater with me when I saw it, because I walked out of this movie and my first thought was, this movie's the perfect analogy of the DCEU. It was a fucking dumpster fire. It was all over the place. It made very little sense. And it only loosely, and I do mean the term loosely, loosely adapted a, a current DC story to try to make it fit into a film. It There were parts of it I liked, but overall, I did not care for this film. I just felt it was a mess. I just felt it was like all over the place. It was supposed to be like a uh, adaptation of the Flashpoint mm -hmm. comic book storyline where the Flash goes back in time, saves his mom, and then... Oh, spoilers for those who haven't watched oh, thank it. Thank you. I was about to say, it's like, yeah, <laughs> spoilers starting now. <laughs> Yeah, well, the Flash goes back in time, saves his mom, but also changes the course of history and then comes back to a DC universe that he doesn't recognize and is actually a lot worse than the one he left. So, I, I mean, for one, um, Michael J. Fox is not Marty McFly in the in the Back to the Future movies, which is crimes. Right. Oh, yeah. no, so, no, that's a hilarious Easter egg joke, though. Yeah, but. Like I said, there was just so many, like I said, but that that's the only thing it has in common with Flashpoint is Flash goes back in time, saves his mom, and then the future or his universe is actually worse for everyone else, but better for him because mom's still alive, but everyone, it sucks for everyone else. That's it. Like, it's the opposite of what Civil War did in the Marvel universe. I hate the comic book story, Civil War. I hated it. That, that comic storyline was one of my least favorite storylines ever, mm -hmm. but I actually like the MCU version of Civil War because it explained... Iron Man and Captain America's motivations much, much better and actually made you sympathize with both characters instead of outright making one of them the bad guy and one of them the good guy. So I thought the MCU did a better job with Civil War than the comics did. The comics version of Flashpoint I really enjoy. This version I hate. <laughs> it could have been much better. It could have been much more than it was, but... It's not necessarily the movie's fault. Again, I think Josh mentioned it in Expectations or Tom mentioned it in Expectations. One of you guys said that we've learned with the DCEU now that the director just can't be the director. Mm -hmm. yep. And and, and the, honestly, the only DCEU EU movie where I say the, two, the director got to do exactly what they wanted to do is Man of Steel. Definitely feels like a Zack Snyder film. And I will say that The Suicide Squad definitely felt like a James Gunn film. It was those two really do feel like that's what their director wanted. And the director got to do what they wanted to do. And that's I would it. like to add in, I, I think. Go ahead. I was going to say, I think that Wonder Woman and uh, Aquaman, too, because they didn't expect those to make money. Yeah, well, Aquaman, though, has some moments in the movie where it feels like it's still made by committee. And Batman v Superman was 100 percent made by committee. Oh, yeah. 100 percent. Mm hmm. Yeah, and the both versions of Justice League are not good. The Justice League is has nice moments, but overall is a weak film. And the Zack Snyder version of Justice League is slightly better than Justice League, but that's it's I don't know. If Justice League is an F paper, then the Snyder version of it is a D minus. So it's like it's all right. It added punctuations that were missing, so like prove the grammar a little bit. Yeah, and it cited as reference it, it, it cited more references than Wikipedia. So, you know, it's it's all right. But <laughs> like I said, all of the other DC movies, with the exception of the, the two I mentioned, and that's just me personally, feel like they're all made by 
either committee or they're made by the producers or just doing all kinds of stuff behind the scenes and handcuff and handcuffing mm-hmm. the directors. And this movie definitely feels like it handcuffed the director because he's a good director. It chapter one. I really love that movie. You know, oh, yeah. and I, I really liked, I, I know we didn't do it on the podcast, but I really liked chapter two a lot. So he's a good director. Mm-hmm. This movie, maybe this wasn't the right director for this film. At least not the version that we got, you know, I'm, I'm, and I'm almost positive with all the rewrites and reshoots and all this other stuff that his version of the film was, or his vision for what the film was going to be is vastly different from what ended up coming out two weeks ago. So release the machete cut. <laughs> Hashtag release the machete cut. But yeah, so I've got other thoughts. I don't want to ramble too long. So I will kick things over to Tom. Your final thoughts going into the film or coming out of coming out of the film, I should say. Uh, I don't want to ramble too long, says Dan. Hands it over to Tom. Tom rambles too long. Uh, I will start by saying this film was fine. <laughs> Forgettable. I know, right? I was as surprised as you guys are. Wow. So yeah, I'm uh, the hater. Holy shit. I know. It's forgettable, but it's overall, let's just say the story-wise, it's fine. As you said, Nigel, it's just watered down Flashpoint. Read the comic books, watch the animated movie. It's fine. It hits the superhero beats. They didn't make Flash as annoying as they could have been. Uh, personally, I like the contrast that they had young immature Barry in there to add like that contrast between prime Barry, you know, who was contrasting his speediness, more mature, a little more um, relatable. They did push a lot of hit that Barry Allen is the butt monkey of the universe hmm. thing pretty hard in the beginning. It's like, dude, don't try to out Peter Parker, Peter Parker guys. But I understand why they did that because, hmm. you know, you only have two hours to get across, you know, why you should care about this guy. And really only 10 minutes of actual plot to really make you care. So that's why they had to do that. So it's it's fine. It wasn't as enjoyable as Aquaman. Aquaman was dumb fun. This just had moments of fun wrapped in some really god damned lousy special effects yes. and CG. My god. I know I'm the 100th person saying this, but you had 10 years to make this film and it still looks and feels like a rush job. The CW show from 10 years ago looks better than you and did better multiverse shenanigans than you get your shit together especially since you know this is basically like takes place in an alternate version of man of steel and man of steel for all the flaws the movie has the special effects in man of steel hold up really really well today Mm -hmm. so when you're watching the the quote-unquote man of steel parts in the flash they stand out bad like it doesn't mm-hmm. look nearly as good as Man of Steel did in 2013. Yeah, but go on. Yeah, it's, oh, it's a, I I should have looked at who did like the production or like the the costume and CG because they need to be fired, dear God. But overall, it's just like the acting was all right. Um, Ezra, I was okay with Ezra Miller's performance yes. as Barry Allen, both you know, prime Alan and immature Alan. I like the the subtle ticks and visual cues he did, like definitely drawing from like the Peter David version of Quicksilver in the comics, who was that man forever stuck in the back of the line at a DMV, you know. So you could see like he was a man, Ezra Miller's Flash was a man with infinite patience, but also suffering from eternal annoyance, but still like a mature, like, down to earth kind of guy like we need to do it the right way the world's fastest man but say we need to take this investigation slow so there were parts i liked but just nothing about it really wowed me it wasn't dumb fun it was i'll let it pass the class if only so i don't have to see it again next year (laughs) josh now that i've Actually, I, that was only five minutes. I thought I was going to go on I longer. love that you're timing yourself now. <laughs> baby steps, baby steps. Baby steps, yes. Baby steps. I will admit, I didn't hate this movie. I'm kind of slightly above Tom and his. I had fun watching the movie. Like I said, I felt like it knew what it was. 
and you could tell that they got the memo that this movie isn't getting a sequel so they're just like fucking we don't care about the cg because seriously the cg was like my first takeaway from this movie i'm like oh my god did they even finish clicking render before they sent these off to Right? Like the baby in the microwave, which is funny in itself because Ezra Miller, that whole scene was just like, you, they, they opened it and then you see the baby and you're all like, oh my God, Uncanny Valley. Yeah. It was just, the CG was just bad. Also, when they say like Michael Shannon, not to trample your thought, I would just one quick, when they say Michael Shannon returned as Zod, that's clearly Michael Shannon's head just superimposed on another body that's supposed to be Zod. Like, it's just not, it doesn't look right. It's so off looking. Everything just looks off. Like... Why did the Lord of the Rings come out 20 years ago and its CG is 10 times that this is? I know. Right. Like, I read something. There yeah. was a visual effects artist. They were saying, they, they basically mentioned, it's like, look, I work in the industry and I can tell you exactly why Flash's graphics look like shit. It's because they gave you these stupid requirements and no time to complete them. So they don't care about the end result. Only money. That's literally Mr. Krabs. Only money. So they don't give a shit. That, that's mm-hmm. why... The current, like the past couple years worth of CG has been crap because the studios don't give a fuck. They go for the lowest bidder. They find who will do it for whatever price in the timeline that they want it done. So they do it. It looks like shit. They still make their millions and they don't care. The studios don't care. So that's why the quality has gone. So they don't care. I understand that. Like, I understand where that's coming from. It sucks for us as viewers, especially people who enjoy watching a movie like Man of Steel, like Lord of the Rings, or any movie with decent CG, because it seriously took me out of the moment every time bad CG came out. Remember when they were doing the Universes Collide section, and they did the flash of, like, Chris Reeves, Chris Reeves, and George Reeve, and... But yes, yeah. I remember that scene. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. I get the impact of the scene, but it was so bad. The only one that looked normal was Nick Cage. Oh. but um the rest were bad <laughs> that was a joke uh <laughs> no, we're, we're aware that nick cage exists in the uncanny valley so yeah. <laughs> <you know. laughs> but it's like even when he's like going back in time and they're doing like the the cg of what just happened you're like oh my god this is like playstation 2 it's so bad yeah I was saying, like, yeah, the remember the Final Fantasy Spirits Within movie? Oh like, my god, twenty years ago, all that CG, yeah, it's dude, movie. that came out when I was two thousand one ish, because it was like before I entered my senior year. Yeah, that was bad. Yeah. Now, this, overall, though, I l- like the movie. I thought Ezra Mil- Miller did a good job. Sasha Kaje was amazing. I loved her entire interpretation as a uh, Supergirl. Michael Keaton coming mm-hmm, back mm-hmm. was really awesome, especially seeing what that. Batman could do with modern air quotes effects. Granted, the CG still sucked, but being able to see that mm. Batman do what that Batman was meant to do, especially after watching the older ones and he's, you know, walking around like he's literally wearing a rubber suit. It yeah. was cool seeing him be able to do that. That's what everybody expected of that Batman and Michael Keaton. And mm-hmm. there was also that aspect to the member berries thing. It's just like, uh, no way home, Spider-Man, no way home. Remember when you were like, Dan, I think you mentioned it's like, yeah, they did all the memes and they had time for applause. <laughs> Yes. No, it, I didn't actually notice that until I watched No Way Home on Disney Plus yeah. uh, alone in my living room with no one else. It, like when Andrew Garfield first pops up in the movie, there's a pause for applause for him to show yeah. up when he first yeah. when he takes his mask off. But it's like you ever mm-hmm. since you've told me that it's like, oh, fuck, they're going to do this again, aren't they? Like I see it now. So he was all like, I'm Batman. Hold for applause. I'm just like, yeah. So when, when he did the whole let's get nuts. Hold for applause. <laughs> yeah. The whole. Yeah, you want to get nuts? They even had the bats coming behind him and shit. Like, Ay. or whatever. Yeah, hold for applause. It's just like member berries. Oh, great. Granted, this, they didn't do it yeah. to death. There was only like a few scenes that they did that with. But overall, I liked how they did the movie. I thought it had flow. I'm not going to say good flow, but it started and it definitely ended. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and no it could have been a lot better i remember reading too that the original ending was supposed to include shazam supergirl the flash and michael keaton batman as batman were going to be the rebooted dceu going forward so that was yeah. supposed to be the mm-hmm. rebooted dc like you mentioned in your initial thoughts dan that those were the that was going to be the core group of the justice league going forward but fan outcry and with the addition of Batgirl. Well, yeah, that was supposed to be the next movie, yeah. Batgirl was going to join in the next movie. Like, the Batgirl movie was going to follow mm-hmm. this. But yeah, I, honestly, I can't wait for James Gunn's interpretation. I liked The Suicide Squad. Like I said, Guardians 3 is one of the best movies out of Phase 4. 
I have theories about that though. Oh, well, well. Because Guardians Three, well, Guardians Three is to me is the only movie that feels like it doesn't have anything to do with Phase Four. Oh. It's its own film, mm-hmm. and and I just I like that. That's what I liked about no, it. No, like I like the movie. Yeah, but, and I like James Gunn. I don't think he's done too much that I don't like. So I'm really looking forward to his interpretation of the DC EU or whatever the fuck they're gonna call it. So oh my god, Dan. Yeah, yeah. We got a new Superman movie coming out. It'll have been what twelve years. Yeah, it's slated 2025, yeah. so two year, about two years from today is its, its expected release. So Jesus. To our audience, you need to understand, we were watching Man of Steel that night. We pre-bought our tickets like a week in advance. We were just excited. I think all three of us was just like nuts. Tom, you, you, you were apprehensive as usual. Like I was remodeling a kitchen when we were doing this, and me and Dan were texting like madmen. I remember me and Dan were just like freaking fangirling all out for that movie when it came out. And I was the same when yeah. Superman Returns came out. I cannot wait to watch this movie. I, I'm excited for that. Uh, poor Henry Cavill, though. Not to, you know, I know, that's what kills me. That's what kills me. He was perfect. I loved Henry Cavill. I'm not saying, like, I'm looking forward to the movie. But yes, I am super sad that Henry Cavill is not going to be involved I'm, in it. Like, I'm, sad oh, I love him so a, much. I'm sad he never got a real fair shake as Superman. He didn't. Because Man of Steel, he's great as Superman and Clark in Man of Steel, especially when he starts towards the end of the movie, when he starts to actually behave like Superman. But, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's still a Zack Snyder film. And Zack Snyder's never made any bones about the fact he can't stand Superman. So I don't know why you would hire somebody who hates Superman to direct a Superman film. But then again, I wasn't in charge at the time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, he also doesn't really seem to get Batman either. It's just like, yes. Batman should kill, guys. Right. Batman should totally kill. Because Watchmen. He made Watchmen. And then everybody's like, oh, look, you made a dark and gritty superhero movie. Oh, let's Let's do that with the DC movies. Right. And then that's that's exactly what happened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All of them got shat on. Yeah. And Batman v Superman, which is another Zack Snyder film, is a disjointed mess. The Superman parts feel like they take place in a different movie. Actually, they take feel like they take place in a different universe. Mm-hmm. Seriously, that was three movies put into one. That was Superman's right. sequel. That was Batman's movie. And that was like the bat. That was like it should have been Man is still two. It should have been, you know, then the Batman and then. Batman v Superman. That's the way it should have come out. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So they had uh, Batman v Superman. Like the, the only decent parts of Batman v Superman are the Batman parts, which is the parts that, that Zack Snyder likes anyways. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. But, oh, he likes the Frank Miller Batman. Yeah, he likes the Frank Miller Batman and all that. So I don't know. I just I kind of feel bad that Cavill never got a fair shake as Superman. None of them did. None of them got a sh- fair shake for anything. Well, I, I, will say, I will say that the first Wonder Woman movie was really good. Gal Gadot really did feel like Wonder Woman in that film. The movie, I thought the movie was great. Uh, Chris Pine played off of her really well the casting was good so the first wonder woman movie i think was probably the best of the dceu films Mm -hmm. now wonder woman 84 (laughs) no but um there's lots of problems with that 84 is terrible yeah wonder woman 84 is the exact opposite of the first wonder woman it's like really bad Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and aquaman was dumb fun wasn't a good film but it was dumb fun and i just feel bad that cavill he was so excited to play Superman. He, the guy grew up being a Superman fanboy. He's also like a diehard fan of The Witcher, and then The Witcher kind of screwed him over. I know he's also a diehard Warhammer 40K, so I'm really hoping this 40K thing does well for him because everything this guy's loved as his child that he gets to be casted in it ends up being shat on. Yes, Dude, please, yeah. please don't do him wrong on Warhammer 40K, yeah. guys. I don't know. And, and also, it, it breaks my heart because when, when Black Adam came out and he did that Twitter thing where he was like, I'm back as Superman, and we got projects going forward you can tell in that video he is genuinely happy he's so happy he's back as superman again and then not a month after that twitter video henry cavill's out of superman we're good we're gonna be good to get a new one you're like oh oh yeah oh they really put a yeah. gun to his head uh, i see what you did there god yeah i still got it guys <laughs> and that's our show so <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm just like I said, it's just I, 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 I do agree with your are we in group thoughts now or, or are we? Yeah, we've been in group thoughts. It's all good. Okay. Well, I didn't want to, I didn't want to trample over the whatever else you had to say. Oh, yeah, it's like that was pretty much mine. So you're good. Well, I was just saying the the scene that I hated the most though was the nostalgia scene. I'm just going to call it that, where it was just like they showed George Reeve and Christopher Reeve Superman, and they showed the Adam West oh, Batman, God. and then they you know, and then they they had the Superman fighting the spider. That's you know, okay, that's a that's a nice little ha ha ha. Yeah, yeah, but that's a deep cut. That's a, that one, no one's going to get yeah, that. that 
unless you're yeah, us. Who is this for? Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, who's this for? Yeah, that was for all the people who watched that one Kevin Smith interview from like 2003 or whatever the fuck it was. Yeah. yeah. Like, I got the joke, but nobody else I knew got that joke. I think I heard one other person laugh in the theater when I w- went. Yeah. Like I said, that's a deep cut. It's just... Like I didn't care for that nostalgia. See, that took me right out of the film. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I guess I maybe I was a little harsh in my initial final thoughts of the film, movie. Like I can agree with Tom; it's forgettable. Oh, you could be as harsh as you yeah. want. I mean, I just I mean, have well, standards. No, it's don't. not so much I'm harsh on this film. I'm just ever since 2013, I am. But actually, I liked Man of Steel. It, I thought it was flawed, but I liked Man of Steel. I didn't start hating on the yeah. DCEU until Batman v Superman. Man of Steel is a flawed film. It's not that great. It's got really good moments. You can see the building blocks of something, the potential for something special to be there. They shat on it immediately with the sequel. Like, Batman v Superman's a mess. The first Suicide Squad movie is not very good at no. all. Wonder Woman's good. Yeah, Wonder Woman was a good film. Wonder Woman 84 is bad. Aquaman is not a good film, but it's fun to watch and it has some good moments. Justice League, both versions of Justice League are not very good. And then this film is a dumpster fire. So, yeah, yeah. I was expecting, I was expecting like uh, a train wreck, that uh, toxic train wreck uh, from a few months ago. I was expecting that. Yeah. So keep that in mind. When I'm saying this movie was fine, that's because it was not a toxic yeah. train wreck. <laughs> The only thing I'm worried about is with the new DCU, one of the biggest criticisms, and I thought it was unfairly levied against the Man of Steel movie. He's not Christopher Reeve. He's not the Christopher mm-hmm. Reeve Superman. Yeah. That was like, that's a lot of people were just hating on the film because it wasn't Christopher Reeve Superman. And that's not Henry Cavill's fault. And I don't think they're going to learn their lesson because they made a Christopher Reeve style Superman film that also disappointed at the box office that was superman returns that yeah. movie that movie takes place in the same universe as the reeves films he's supposed to be the christopher reeves superman and people still hate it on that film it didn't i mean it got beat out by pirates of the caribbean 2 which is not that great of a movie yeah dude it barely made 200 million domestically right and so then they make man of steel which is radically different from the christopher reeves films but a lot of people were like oh it's not christopher reeves superman so we don't like it and i'm afraid that mm-hmm. the new superman movie and i'm excited for the casting i do like the two choices they made for superman and lois and i think james gunn's a good director i don't know if it'll be a bad film or not but i'm afraid it's going to be ghostbusters afterlife they're going to swing too hard in the other direction really go on the whole well this is one thing i have a little bit of faith james gunn has built up a little bit of you know credit with me because so far he's done a really good job and he holds fairly he's basing superman legacy off of all-star superman mm-hmm. it's been a long time since i read that comic but i remember it being really good and I'm trying to think of the story on that one i've read so many superman comics i remember all-star superman being good and i remember enjoying that one and it's one of the better uh received superman mm-hmm. comic books just i think there was just a one-off or something i'm trying to remember that yeah, it was um, Superman's dying and he's kind of getting his order, his uh, shit together. Is that That's the one where he like was absorbed too much sunlight and then mm-hmm. he gave Sklois the superpowers too for a while, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the one so, that famously had him talking down a girl who's trying to commit suicide. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's the type of Superman that they're going to go with. They may have a different story. I don't think they're going to kill Superman off in the first film because it would be stupid if they killed him off in the second <laughs> film. <laughs> that would just be Who so would do dumb. That? Yeah. But they're definitely not going to kill him off in the first one. He does a good job with it and he's really good. If Guardians 3 taught me anything that the first two Guardians didn't teach me is that he's really good at, you know, pressing on our emotions, you know, making us hit feel those feels, yeah. so to speak. For me it's like I've I've had people tell me and I think Tom you were there for one. We went to uh the Dark Lord Day years ago. Like we mm-hmm. were talking, I think we had this massive discussion. This is before Reddit got really involved, but Goku v Superman and I remember somebody asked, like, who's your favorite superhero, which led to that conversation. And they were all, I was like, Superman. It's like, oh, so you just like big, strong guys who can punch everything. And I'm like, that's not why I like Superman. I like mm-hmm. Superman because all of his, the good stories of Superman is because it's not about him being big and strong and punching and everything. It's because it's, you have to have a unique story to f- ha- for Superman because of all that. So that you mm-hmm. have to like twix those emotions. You have to like, you have to be a very charismatic Superman. You have to make you like a guy who's all powerful. Right. You know, he's basically a God on earth. Yeah. So yeah, you yeah, gotta yeah. make the stories have to be unique because if Superman can beat him with his fist, it's boring. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, they have to, they have to be, yeah go ahead well my thing with superman is the same reason why i love star trek so much the best episodes of star trek aren't the ones where they shoot their way out of a problem it's the one where they have to outthink their way out of a problem yes 
Mm-hmm. Superman, mm-hmm. the best Superman stories are not the ones where he punches somebody into the stratosphere. The best Superman stories are the ones where he has to overcome and figure out a way to defeat, to solve the problem without using his super strength or something like that. Like, mm-hmm. And I, I've always loved the idea that Superman is the one that all the other heroes in the DC universe look up to. Mm-hmm. He's the benchmark. He's the one that's like, we need to be him. And and I love the, the best Batman stories are the ones where Batman recognizes like, I'm not Cal, you know, I'm not mm-hmm. Clark. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. not going to be as good as Clark. I, I want to see a Superman that's kind of like that, like that's more inspiring to people. And mm-hmm. and tangentially, or I guess non-tangentially, same with the Fla- any future Flash films. Much having him try be so fast that he can travel time and fix every problem, but this, that, and the other. Uh, hopefully in the future for the next Flash film, if they go Ezra Miller as a star or whoever, when Gunn takes over, just try to keep it, a human level flash no more wibbly wobbly multiverse time travely bullshit you know just something grounded yeah. also too, like. stop mixing them together if you use barry allen use barry allen if you use wally west use wally west stop giving me barry west hmm. because that's what ezra miller is ezra miller flash definitely has elements of both barry allen and wally west mm-hmm. they did the same thing in like the animated justice league movie and they've done it with like in a couple of the other animated dc movies uh where it's like supposed to be barry allen but he kind of behaves like wally west you're like, no, I, I don't care who you want to be the Flash. You want Wally West or Barry Allen. I don't care. Make them true right. to their character. Stop giving me Barry West or Wally or Wally mm-hmm. Allen. I just, you know. Yeah, keep some of the elements that you had in this yeah. film. The whole, like, he's the guy forever trapped in a ATM line. But it's just like, stick more to that. None of the extra Wally Westy well, shit. Just, yeah. The only one that so far has got it right is the Flash TV series on WB. Like that Barry Allen was definitely Barry Allen. He was the, you know, yeah. he, he was a forensic scientist and all this other stuff. And then when they did introduce Wally West into the show, he behaved like Wally West did. Yeah, yeah. Oh, did they eventually introduce Wally West? I stopped watching after like season five. They did. I I tried to <laughs> binge it not too long ago when I was traveling and uh, it just made my trip feel longer. So. <laughs> <laughs> Time dilation. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but they cut back on the butt monkey stuff, keep some of the more sincere things and not so much Wally Westing it. This We're giving you this for free right now, Gun. Uh, we will charge you next time, though. But just when you're doing the new Flash stuff, just keep the human elements of him, lose the Wally Westy shit, and good luck finding the, someone who, uh, who won't be Ezra Miller. Whatever kind of movie we get for Superman in two years, I will say this. That soundtrack's going to be banging. Oh, yeah. <laughs> James Gunn could put together a soundtrack. Garen fucking teed. It is going to be awesome. But I was going to say, like, the director of this film is actually going to be directing the second movie in the Gunverse, the new Batman movie, which is titled Brave and the Bold. Oh, interesting. So, yeah. So Batman team up movies. So you think we'll have a Batman team up with Flash sort of film? Or? I think we already I had that. Don't know. I just know that all, nothing's been released about it. Just the title and the director, and that's Batman: Brave and the Bold. Huh. Or I well, think it's just Brave and the Bold. It's just a Batman movie. Okay. I've I've heard nothing about that. To be honest, I've I've taken my hand off the pulse of the oh, yeah. shit. So it's. <sighs> Well, watch it for the podcast, but um, (laughs) honestly, if DC, if DC is smart, if they're really planning on Superman coming out in two years, no more superhero movies for two years. I thought there was one other DC movie coming out. Technically, Aquaman is still slated to come out sometime. That's Uh, right. Aquaman too, but that's another like lame duck movie. I don't even know if they're going to keep Jason Momoa as Aquaman. There's rumors that they are, but I don't know if they're going to still like just no superhero movies for like until Superman comes out. Build the hype. Build the hype up, you know, like Marvel is self-destructing in a way that I have just never seen before. Just let them do their thing and then you can save the day. Superman can fly in and save the day. Literally. (laughs) Yeah. That'll be funny if like 10 years from now, we're looking at DC versus Marvel. Like, because remember it was like when MCU was getting going, we was in like phase two, phase three, and we were all looking or hell, even up through Endgame. I remember the 90s belonged to DC and it's like up through about 2004, mm-hmm. they owned TV, they owned the movies. It was all DC. That's probably half the reason why I'm a DC fanboy. I'll laugh if like in five to 10 years from now, we're looking at the exact opposite. Like what the fuck, dude? Marvel just dropped the ball. DC is everything. DC rocks. Marvel could take a lesson from DC. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, time will tell. As long as they also fix their CG yeah, problem. Please. Yeah, please can please fix, the CG. fix their CG problem. Oh, that goes for all of you. Marvel needs to fix theirs, too, because theirs has been awful the last few movies as well. Like I said, with James Gunn, I'm hopeful. In Gun, in Gun right now, trust. in Gun We Trust. I will eat crow if otherwise, but in Gun We Trust. In Gun We Trust. Have Gun <laughs> Will yeah. Travel. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no. And, uh, well, that's it for tonight's show. As a reminder, you can find us on firepitpodcast.com. Uh, there are links to Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, wherever fine podcasts are sold. Please like and subscribe to whatever medium you choose. We really appreciate it. It helps us out. And uh, if you could, just leave a review. Any review. I mean, if you love us, you hate us, or you're indifferent, just leave us a review. That actually helps up the podcast grow. I know we've taken a little bit of a break, but we're trying to. we're still trying to build this up some more. Any help you guys can do can... We really appreciate it. And if you want to keep helping us out by giving us feedback, thoughts, or whatever, be sure to join us on our Discord channel. The link is in the episode's description at discord.me slash firepit. There you'll get notifications of new episodes and even better, engage in discussion with other fans of the show. Fans such as... Pyrrhic Thorne and Danielle and many, many others. And you can email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. And you can also like our face. You can like our face on book.com. No, you can like our page <laughs> in Facebook. And I don't know if we're doing the Twitter, but our handle is at firepitcce. Both are linked in the episode's description. So guys, we have uh, got another episode. That's two this year. That's two more than last year. Wow, we're really yeah, churning we them out, guys. Chugging along, chugging along. Ah, so much easier when there was a pandemic. It was, wasn't it? We yeah. didn't have things to dude, you don't understand how difficult it was just to plan the time to do this today. Yeah, and that was without us watching a movie. Yeah, that was just like I sold it to my wife as an hour and it's been two. But we want to eventually get to a monthly release schedule. We will return to journey format, mm. but we may have episodes like this peppered in here or there. Hopefully next month sometime mm. you will get selection section number 13 and we will announce our next journey. It's going to be a different format. Um, I don't think we're going to be sticking to the six degrees of so to speak anymore. Yeah, we have a yeah we have a, we have a different format we're working on. We're hoping to do a selection mm. section here in the next month or so. Uh, some of us are traveling. Some of us have vacation and family plans, so there won't be another episode for a little while. But we will have one sooner rather than later. And mm-hmm. we're, it's going to be a selection section, and we're mm-hmm. going to ev- thoroughly explain our new and improved format. There, we're taking a page out of the DC universe, and we are rebooting our <laughs> format. Yes, but in a good way. But we're, we're, we're going to gun verse this yeah, one. But we're trying to cast Henry Cavill, though, but we, we he won't return our calls and we're pretty sure we can't afford him anyways. So we're going to start a GoFundMe so we can get him on our show. Yes. I keep saying we're like a um, a Warhammer 40K podcast, yeah. but it's he's not buying it. Maybe we need to make more Warhammer 40K references. I would love to have Henry Cavill on. That would be awesome. Oh my god, it's that that <laughs> there's not a multiverse in the multiverse where we get Henry Cavill on this show. It, it, it would it would just be two hours of him talking and all three of us going, it's you, Henry Cavill. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't be able to do the outro. What's it like to be you? Yeah, what's it like to be you? What's it like to be so awesome that you're you? <laughs> <laughs> but before we go further, I want to just say welcome back, Josh. On behalf of me and Dan, uh, welcome back. So how was it? Oh, thank you. You're welcome. How was it to be away well, it was, for three months? It was months? two months, but it wasn't fun being a 40-year-old going through the officer equivalent of basic training. Yeah, I've been in the Air Force for 20 years. And anybody who went to OTS with me knows this because apparently I say this all the time. And I decided to do the whole officer track when I could be retiring. So I'm dumb. Uh, No, I went there. I had, (laughs) it's weird. It's like, I'm used to interacting with like young airmen and we had tests and stuff. Like I used to be the training guy there. I go there and it's like, I, it took me a second to remember that I'm going here with people who are like cream of the crop. I like to think that I do well well enough job at my work. I mean, they picked me to be an officer, right? But dude, everybody there was like a fucking mm-hmm, superior mm-hmm. performer. And like, I felt like I was trying to keep up. I mean, I think I did a good job being, you know, like some of them were as young as like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 27, 26. 
I think the nearest person in age to me who was a mm -hmm. prior service was 34, 35. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you were top gunning it. You were you were Tom Cruise from Top Gun, but more maverick than the original Top Only Gun. Only I was trying to keep up with them. I was the guy in the back of the class who was just like, I don't know if I'm supposed to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I've made a mistake. What am I doing here? I could be retired in six months. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too old for this shit. You were the Murtaugh. Oh my God. I was the Murtaugh. Oh. <laughs> but no, it's like, seriously, the people I was there with, my my flight and everything, they were awesome. I really enjoyed my time there with them. What's funny is I didn't sell our podcast at all because I wanted them to respect me in the morning. <laughs> but I did tell one guy, a friend of mine, so, hey, Carvey, and uh, I think he has listened to the podcast and he called me the other day and he's like, so, yeah, you know, I'm going to be down because he's got to come up to Ohio for training sometime in the future. And he's like, yeah, maybe mm -hmm. I could be a uh, guest star on your podcast. I'm like, I mean, he would be fun to have on. I mean, OK, but he has to know what he's getting into. OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, thank you, guys. Um, I definitely missed hanging out with you guys. But welcome back. The podcast has missed you. No, well, thank you. Well, I've missed the podcast. And hopefully we will see you talking to the audience again next month with we'll our selection section number 13. Yep. So we're, we're really looking forward to it. We've been talking about it for over a year of how we're going to change things and make it so that we have a good balance of work and life and fun. So you guys really enjoy it. I'm actually excited for the new format. Like, I, I think we're really going to get, we're actually going to get to even more interesting movies than we would have with the old format. I'm really looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. The same. Well, anyways, we will see you again. Like I said, sooner rather than later. Can't wait. Until then, I've been Dan. I've been Tom. And I've been Josh. Thanks for listening. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. <laughs> Stay safe out there. <laughs> This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, INC. LLC. Jesus. Oh, for fuck's sake. Ah! <laughs> I'm Ron Burgundy. I can only... I read everything on my prompt. Fuck you, San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> Put a question mark in the teleprompter. I'm Ron Burgundy? This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. There we go. We You can edit that one in, Josh. Thank you. Thank you. I'm making it easy for you. Ha ha ha. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. You're both idiots.